Now, previously, we've talked about the critical region uh, for a hypothesis test. And for a binomial uh, hypothesis test, finding the critical region is finding the specific values of x so that you can reject the null hypothesis. So if you had a number line and you had these individual values of x that you know that the binomial probability can take on, then there will be uh, a region, perhaps at one end, or perhaps even at two ends if it's a two-tailed test, so that any of those three or any of those two, um, if you had observed those values, then you could reject the null hypothesis. They would be inside the critical region. So anything else, so these ones, are inside the acceptance region. And so we would be failing to reject the null hypothesis if we observed any of those, but rejecting if we observed any of those. So our job here is to determine how can we identify the critical region if we are asked to. The critical region method for hypothesis testing is a perfectly valid way of setting out your hypothesis test. Okay, and you can use this method each and every time if you like. Okay, so let's say uh, the distribution that we were looking at x is binomially distributed with n is 10 and probably 0 0.3. It's a one tailed test at the 5% significance level. Okay, so this is how I would go about it. Uh, when you go to menu on your calculator, you go to number 7, distribution, and you scroll down to binomial CD, okay, you want to go to list. So in the list, you will see on the Casio class whiz a table that looks like this, okay? There's one, two, three, four, etc. down the side, okay? Now what you want to do is you want to type in, so for 10, okay, uh, we're going to type in all the possible values that this uh, distribution can take on. So 0 up to 10. Now you don't have to go all the way down to 10, but for the purposes of this demonstration I'm going to. Okay. As you do this more and more, you will uh, get to understand where it would be worthwhile looking. Okay, but we're just going to see them all. Once you've got to that M1, uh, your cursor should be on the next box down. Just press equals, and you get to type in N, which is 10, and probably 0 0.3. It takes a little bit of memory to do this, okay, and then it generates uh, the tables for you. If you're doing uh, at Excel, for example, then you would be able to find these tables uh, you're given them, okay? But for the rest of us, then we need to use our calculator. If the probability uh, isn't in your tables, then you would have to use your calculator to do this. So what we can see is we've got 0 0.0282, uh, 0 0.1493, 0 0.1494, 0 0.6496, OK, I'll just keep going, 0 0.8497, 0 0.9526, 0 0.9894, 0 0.9984, uh, 0 0.9998, uh, 0 0.9999, and then that will be 1, OK? So... What we're looking at here, okay, for a one-tail 5% significance level, is we're looking down this list, okay, and looking for the overlap of 0 0.05, the significance level, okay? So the overlap we can see is here, 0 0.05. So what we can say here is the probability of x being less than or equal to 0 is 0 0.0282. And the probability that x is less than or equal to 1 is 0 0.1493. 1 is less than your significance level. 1 is greater than your significance level. Anything that is identified as less than the significance level is in the critical region. So the critical region is less than or equal to 0. So in other words, it's just 0. 
zero is the only number that is in the critical region for this test. So that would mean that you would have to get uh, zero as the observed value, okay, if you were looking at uh, less than, okay. Now, if you were looking at greater than, okay, so this is the case of looking at less than, if the, if the alternative hypothesis is less than the probability of 0 0.3, if you were looking at greater than 0 0.3, okay, then you need to look at the top end. Okay, so the top end, you're looking at 0 0.05, the, pro the significance level, down. So um, 1 take away 0 0.05 is 0 0.95, okay? So we're looking for the overlap of 0 0.95, which is here, okay? So 0 0.95 overlap is here, between 4 and 5. Now, if you're looking, if your alternative hypothesis was P is greater than 0 0.3, then you need to look at greater than or equals to. But remember, your tables are looking at less than or equals to, okay? Which causes a little bit of a problem. Because we can't just write in X is less than or equal to both of these values, okay? I can't do that. I need to look at greater than or equal to. So where that is my overlap at the 4 and the 5, I actually need to look at 5 and 6. Because, oh, well, don't want to bracket both of them. And the reason being is that you always add 1 to both of those numbers because this one is 1 take away less than or equal to 4. And this one is always 1 take away uh, less than or equal to 5. That's where you're going to get your overlap from. If I do greater than or equal to 4, greater than or equal to 5, I'm going to do one take away that one and one take away that one, both of which are going to be larger than the 5%, and so I haven't identified my critical region. So greater than or equal to 5 is one take away less than or equal to 4, so 0.1503 and greater than or equal to 6 is le 1 take away less than or equal to 5, so 0 0.0474. So this one is greater than the significance level, this one is less than the significance level. So the one that is less than the significance level, just like it was here, identifies the critical region. So the critical region in this case will be uh, 6 and above, so 6, 7, 8, 9 and 10. So if you had observed 6, 7, 8, 9 or 10, then you would have evidence to suggest that the probability is greater than 0 0.3. So this was assuming that we were looking at P is less than 0 0.3. This was greater than 0 0.3. Okay? So it's a little bit more of a fiddly problem when we're looking at this greater than. So let's see another example. So with this second example, x is binomially distributed with n is 15 and probability of 0 0.7. Okay, we're looking at a one-tail test at a 1% significance level. Okay, so we want to go into menu, number 7, uh, binomial CD, list, and we're going to type in the 0 to 15 here. Okay, so we've got the x's, the p's. Okay, now do we need to go all the way with this? Okay, do we need to type them all in? Um, well, the likelihood is no. The way to uh, determine that is to multiply the 15 by the 0 0.7 to get your expected value. Okay, and then you're looking at the uh, numbers around that value. So, uh, that means you won't have to go so far. So if you had like n is 40, uh, then you don't want to have to type in all 0 to 40. And I don't think your calculator will be able to handle it anyway. There is a certain limit to how many numbers it can actually look at at one time. For this example, I'm going to type in all of them, okay, just so we've got a good idea 
of where everything's coming from. We don't want to jump the gun here. Okay? So, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, or fifteen. So n is 15, and probability is 0 0.7. Takes a little while for the calculator to deal with it all. Okay, so the smallest value I get is this 1.4 times 10 to the minus 8, okay, which is very, very small. I'm scrolling down, I get to 6, that's 0 0.0152. The 5 is 3.6 times 10 to the minus 3, so 0 0.0036, okay? I'm not going to bother writing those ones in. Then uh, for 7, I get 0 0.05, 0 0.1311, 0 0.2783, 0 0.4845, 0 0.7031, 0.8731, 0 0.9647, 0 0.9952, and then 1. Okay? So if we'd done the 15 times 0 0.7, we would have got 10.5. Okay? So you can see that really I could have gotten away with just typing in 5 to 15. Okay? Um, but that's really going to come down to experience of which ones you're really looking for. I didn't really need 0 to 4 there because they were just so incredibly small. So, um, let's say the alternative hypothesis is that P is less than 0 0.7. Okay? So we're looking at a one-tail test, the 1% significance level, so we're looking for the overlap of 0 0.01. So that is there. So we've got the probability that x is less than or equal to 5 is 0 0.0036, which is clearly less than the significance level. And x is less than or equal to 6 is 0 0.0152, which is greater than 0 0.01, the significance level. So there is our overlap, okay? And it is the less than 0 0.01, which identifies the, uh, the critical region. So less than or equal to 5. So the critical region is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So if you had observed any of those values there, you would have a significant result, and so you could reject the null hypothesis. If uh, you'd got six or more, six or more would be in the acceptance region. And so if you would observe six or more, you would fail to reject the null hypothesis. Okay? So that's how it's going to work. So if instead we look at the null hypothesis being greater, probably greater than 0 0.7, we're looking at 0 0.01, the significance level from the top. Okay? So that means we're looking at the overlap of 0 0.99. So the overlap of 0 0.99 occurs here, between 13 and 14. Now, we know from the previous example that it's not 13 and 14 that we look at when we're doing greater than or equal to's. Okay? We need to look at one more than those. So we look at 14 and 15. So... The probability of x being greater than or equal to 14 is one take away less than or equal to 13. So one take away that value there. So that would be 0 0.0353, which is greater than the significance level. And greater than or equal to 15 is one take away less than or equal to 14. So 0 0.0048, which is less than the significance level. And whatever values have less than the significance level is your critical region. And so here we've got that 15 or more is in the critical region. And so we just have 15. OK? And that's how we can find the critical region for that problem. Right. So the last one... is a binomial distribution where n is 20, the probability is 0 0.52, and we've got a two-tailed test uh, with a 5% significance level. 
Okay, so x and p. Okay, now if we did a check at the 20 times 0.52, around about 10. Okay, so we probably don't want to have two small values of x, we probably don't want to have two large values of x in our table. Okay, so if you want to adjust which ones you're typing in and have a go and see which ones are going to work, which ones show you what you need, then do so. Okay, um, I'm going to uh, try and put them all in. I think there's probably going to be the limit of the calculator. I don't think it likes putting in any more than that. So n is 20 and probably 0.52. Okay. Right, so I'm not going to write them all in this time. Scrolling down, when probability of x is 0, we get 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7. Um, so scrolling down, um, I'm going to write in 5, and we get 0 0.0132. Uh, 6 is 0 0.0396. 7 is 0 0.0969. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to write some more in. Then uh, we're getting, I'm going to get to 14. That's 0 0.9686. Uh, 15 is 0 0.9903. And 16 is 0 0.9977. Okay, and they continue up to 20. Okay, right. So... Now that uh, we've got our table of values that we refer to them, because we're looking at a two-tail test at a 5% significance level, right? our H1 is that P is not equal to 0.52. So we've got to look at both tails here. And because it's 5% significance level, we halve it. So we're looking at 2.5% either end. So we're looking at 0.025 as the overlap. We can see the 0.025 overlap there, and we can see the 0.025 overlap in the top. So 0.975 overlap there. Okay? So we can write down that the probability of x being less than or equal to 5 is 0.0132, which is less than the 2.5% significance. And we've got x is less than or equal to 6 is 0.0396, which is greater than 0.025. We've also got, from the top end, this overlap at the 1415, but we always add one at the top end, remember? So we're looking at greater than or equal to 15, and greater than or equal to 16. So, uh, greater than or equal to 15 is one take away less than or equal to 14, so 0.0314, so that's greater than the significance level. And greater than or equal to 16 is one take away less than or equal to 15, so 0 0.0097, uh, which is less than the significance level. So the regions that are less than the significance level are the ones that I want. So the critical region is... 5 or less, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 16 or more, so 16, 17, 18, 19, or 20. So if I observed any of those values that are in the critical region, then I would have a significant result, and so evidence to reject the null hypothesis. If I had observed uh, anywhere between 16 to 15 inclusive, then they would be in the acceptance region, and so I would fail to reject the null hypothesis.